Roll for Crit here at Gen Con. Right now, I am in Shadowborn Games booth uh, with Jamie, the founder and designer, well, founder of Shadowborn Games. You didn't design it necessarily. I guess you did in a way. But you designed Oathsworn <laughs> into the Deep Wood, which is a massive game that you can see before us right now. For people who don't know, could you tell them a little bit about what this game is? Um, so Oathsworn is, a, is, is the brainchild of a two and a half year process <laughs> by a team of 25 people to try and make this um, an amazing legacy-like kind of uh, campaign game, an adventure game. Mm -hmm. It's actually a game of two, it's almost like two games in one, because we really wanted to focus on the story in this game. And so we've got a, um, an amazing team of writers making a, it's almost like a choose your own adventure game, but it's, um, it's we call it a twisting tales game. It's right. the board gamer's version of that kind of choose your path adventure and it involves maps and so we have all these maps and um, you, you move around these cities hunting monsters and trying to unlock puzzles and mysteries and opening cool envelopes and all that kind of thing mm -hmm. so you've got that kind of big story element that goes on and then you kind of once you find the monster or it finds you you <laughs> kind of dive down into this visceral combat of teeth and flying claws and blades <laughs> and everything because you All try and take stuff. this thing apart with a bunch of um, pre-Euro pre, pre um, deep Euro mechanics. Yeah, and I mean, uh, we've been lucky enough, Will and I at Roll for Crit, to play the tabletop simulator version of this, or it's a tabletopia, I always get them mixed up, <laughs> but we've been playing it digitally. So this is, seeing it right now for the first time in the flesh, so to speak, uh, it's really impressive. I mean, it is big. <laughs> These minis are enormous and beautiful. Yeah, really she, well she's the size of a real rat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's terrifying and, and awesome. Um, how much work goes into, I mean, the des I mean, I'm sure a ton of it, but how hard is it to deal with those minis and how big is this box going to be? <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, yeah, we've got, um, we've got two dedicated engineers on the team who are working on this all the time, just trying to bring these in because um, you're starting to get into, um, this is a heroic scale, so this is, um, this is 45 mil um, scale, so you get to have loads of extra like dynamic posing and extra detail and some lovely stuff, and because this is quite an intimate fight, you know, it's a nice romantic mm. kind of, go. we're getting close, <laughs> we're, we're battering this rat and all our, all our little babies and you've got a four-man team going in, um, yeah, you can, you can really afford to make a um, make some really nice beefy chunky models but um, yeah there has been it's it's really is a learning learning process with these things because you're um just just trying to fit how much detail you can get in how you can even fit these things in a box is um is its own challenge so we've got this yeah. kind of like tetris thing going on by how do we fit all of these guys into this mystery box <laughs> yeah um, but the game for those who aren't so interested in the miniature side of things or are more interested in the story and the mechanics of stuff we have a standy version of the game that's going to be coming out so you can go for a standy version as one box and then it's like a, a big mini box as a, but that one's going to be like christmas right you're going to have <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have this mystery chest and you open the chest and you don't know what monster you're fighting when you come to one of these things so you'll be picking you'll be told to pick out a certain mystery box and inside the box this massive monster pops out and you're fighting that monster today <laughs> that's so fantastic it, everything's a unique experience each time you come back to the game different monster different fight different mechanics now i know uh, we as people who are not skilled at painting minis <laughs> that's a great to have that option uh, but i mean if if you can and you spring for it they're really cool to look at. I know in addition to the minis, I mean, I think the production value overall is really strong. You guys are coming up with an awesome story. There's going to be an, a companion app with a full narration. Can you talk about, you know, the rest of the, the design aspects, the rest of the team that's bringing that stuff together? I know you've got, you know, uh, Game of Thrones caliber actor, yeah, <laughs> literally. So, so um, for those who don't know, that's um, uh, James Cosmo is our narrator for the app. So he's going to be reading it through. So he played Lord Commander Mormont in Game of Thrones. He was in Troy and Braveheart and Last King of Scotland. He's just an amazing, amazing guy. Um, but he's got this guy, this gruff baritone voice that takes you through the story. Um, we've just been so blessed. Like it's just been incredible. It just started out with just a couple of us, and then it's just built into this massive 25-man team. We're in eight time zones, and we've got this um, incredible um, twins uh, artists who do this amazing artwork. That's Dong Bao and Dong Jean Lu. Um, we've got mm -hmm. Francesca Beryl, this amazing cartographer who does all of these things, and she draws all these by so hand. So cool, yeah. So cool. That's crazy. Yeah, and we just and we got these amazing writers as well. So we've got Aaron Dembski Bowden, who um, who's uh, famous for for doing a lot of games workshop novels. Um, he's leading a team of six writers to get this 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 story turned out. And yeah, it's just been incredible. And um, 
yeah, we're just just really blessed by the team. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I think that that shows. I mean, of course, this some of this is not final component stuff, but already, you know, it's looking really cool. Uh, this is your first time at Gen Con, correct? Yeah, first time. Yeah, and and I believe this is only the second time you've been showing the game off in public like this. Yeah, yeah, there's only just a couple of thousand people who've seen this so far. So I mean, what has that been like? What's the reaction been like showing it to people? Oh, it's so good. You get you yeah. get a nice the head turning thing happens where they kind of look. They walk past the booth and then they go, "What?" <laughs> and they come back and they look at it like, "What is this thing? What are those trees? What is that rat doing?" And then that kind of like opens the door and then you get to sit them down and be like, "Oh wait, there's some mechanics behind this. It's not just plastic. There's there's more going on here." And you get to sit mm. down to talk about the story and the and the me mechanisms. And I think we can I think we can kind of safely claim we've got about three unique mechanisms in the game that we we haven't seen anywhere else. So um, yeah, we'd love to introduce people to that too. Yeah, I mean I mean without going too in depth, I know one of the things we really thought was great about it was the mechanic where you know you have to roll dice but you can choose to either roll dice or flip cards that accomplish the same thing but there's sort of a randomness versus a also random but maybe you can kind of figure out what's going on in that deck a little better it's a little more evenly distributed yeah are you, um, you a dice man or a card man i mean i think i usually go dice <laughs> I, I mean, the thing is i'm not smart enough to remember what came out of that deck <laughs> so i'm just let's just do it let's just see what happens they're, they're not was, your friend though are they they're good, not no. your friend no did you just roll two misses? Did you just roll three dice and missed, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> This Look, is what he does every time we play it's it together. Not, it's not a good decision. I really, uh, uh, someday I'll learn my lesson. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is very exciting. This is coming to Kickstarter when? So we're going to kick off October 8th. Um, so we've got a couple of months just rallying, rallying everyone together. And um, hopefully we'll, we'll have a, have a good, good run at Kickstarter. Yeah, anything else? Any final things that you would want to maybe point out to people if they are, are interested in the game, like some cool aspect of it or something to look forward to? Well, oh my goodness. I know there's a million. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, one of the things about this game, it's very hard to talk about because there's so many mystery elements to it because the idea mm. is it's this legacy game, you are an adventure game, and so you're unlocking puzzles and things. I can't even tell you the work that are. We've actually got an in-team um, maze maker now. I can't tell you any of the stuff he's doing, right? There's some cool stuff. Uh, so, yeah, wow. there's basically all the stuff I want to tell you about, I can't. <laughs> but it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. All right. Well, uh, I'm excited, and everyone else should definitely stay tuned. Uh, check out the description for links to all this stuff. And and uh, thank you so much for talking thank to us. You. And hope you have a great rest of the show. And this is Roll for Crit. For more Gen Con content, like this video, subscribe to Roll for Crit, and follow us on all our social media platforms. But if you really need more, you can visit our Patreon, where we'll be having a series of little Gen Con mini podcast to listen to. And there's our contest running right now for the Keyforge Age of Ascension set. You can try to win. Find the link in the description down below.